covering the villages for you. Here's Jill Winters and the VNN Lifestyle News Team. Residents join forces to feed others for the upcoming holidays. Plus, a techie villager helps his neighbors create a smart house. Those within the American Legion Post 347 Auxiliary Foundation are kicking off their holiday food drive to help feed area families in need. We realized that there was a need for it. This program started at least 20, 25 years ago, uh, and, and it was used to be a very different kind of an event. Uh, the ladies would get together and actually go shop on the day that they were going to put the boxes together. They'd go over to a Walmart, but you see how small it was. They could depend. They could go to the store and buy everything they needed in one day. There's no way we can do that anymore. It, you know, the ordering starts now. We work with uh, Winn-Dixie on 466A. They are awesome. I give them the spreadsheet that I showed you, and they actually will sit down, their, their store manager and their, I guess she's the grocery manager, sit down and go through that list, and they help us buy all the items that we need, whether they're on sale or twofers, so that our dollar stretches even further than we can imagine. So they do a phenomenal job. We couldn't do what we do without them. We're gonna do 50 families again this year. That's kind of been our number for the last couple of years. And we really, um, we've kind of been called off by the schools don't worry about size of family because we pack so much stuff that even a box packed for a family of five will feed a family of 10. So we do um, 50 boxes and we kind of gear them toward a family of five, but all the donations and stuff that we get, we load in so we get extra stuff. At Thanksgiving time, it is a turkey meal. So you get the turkey, we give you a pan to cook the turkey in. You get all the fixings that go with a normal turkey dinner. And then on top of that, we'll do things like spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, cereal, a couple boxes of cereal. Um, we even give them some cookies. They get soup, they get vegetables. We do some oranges, so they have a little bit of fresh fruit. Um, a, lot of, a lot of staples, peanut butter, jelly, again, so they can make sandwiches, feed the kids during that time that they're out of school. We ask our membership to provide canned goods or non-perishable items if they would like to, although we have a, a very decent uh, sized budget. We'll spend about uh, $17,000 this year. Uh, most of it comes from the auxiliary, but we do get donations from the American Legion, from the American Legion Sons and the American Legion Riders making it a family event. So we do all the coordination, but we go in as a family. You don't have to go far around here to look for people in need. Right. And, and that's, why, that's yeah. why I joined the Auxiliary, is that I wanted to be able to contribute to my community and, and serve the people. It makes you feel good to give back, and that's really what it's all about. And we need to teach this generation many, many things, but there is help, and the community is there for you. And, and hopefully they, they carry it forward, they remember. For Christmas time, they will replace the turkey with a ham and also switch out a few other food staples. The meal boxes go to families of students from Villages Elementary of Lady Lake and Carver Middle School in Leesburg. If you would like to make a donation to this effort, just stop by American Legion Post 347 in Lady Lake between noon and 3 p.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays and say your donation is for the holiday food drive. After working at Tesla for three months, Peter Bernard fell in love with the brand and decided he wanted to incorporate technology more in all facets of his life here in the villages, from transportation to home automation, too. I decided we're going to be all electric, so I bought my wife a Tesla back in February of this year, so we have those cars and uh, decided that if we're going to be electric, I need an electric golf car, so about three weeks ago I sold my gas guzzling, I can't really say it's gas guzzling, but I sold my uh, fume belching gas car and bought an electric one and we have the electric bikes to get around to. I'm just a nut about that kind of stuff, so I had my Alexa so it can now control my ceiling fans, lights, television. Um, I'm trying to get the garage door set up. Um, I've got it so we can play music anywhere in the house at, at will. Um, and I can check on my uh, sprinklers uh, from afar so I can start and stop them uh, from a distance. Um, and also cameras all over the place so I can keep tabs on what's going on. 
After attending a neighborhood get together, he met Brian and Diane Howard, who are both disabled. Peter figured some of what he has done inside his own home might make their lives easier too. We did a little before we met him. We had our music hooked up and I had one light in the bedroom, but not with the same technology that Peter showed us. So we got to be friendly and he was very helpful. I really loved the idea that I can turn on lights just with the voice command. You come in, the house is dark, you can turn it on. My, I have a pantry and it's really dark in there. I was even thinking of getting one of those solar lights, but now I can tell it to open up. It was a lot less expensive than the solar light and it's so easy to just tell the machine that I want it to turn on. Very convenient. The other day, Diane comes home and she tells the front door that she wants to come in the door. She, and they literally open, unlocks the door so she can come in uh, and it's easy to come in without me around the house. It's worth every, every dime and it's worth all the time to take it, it takes to set it up. We've only been friends for a couple of months and um, kind of followed their uh, situation here. Um, and I live in the neighborhood and I like helping out people. I also um, and am an AED responder in the neighborhood. So if somebody has a heart attack, I'm the one that runs out and grabs the AED and goes to their house. I've already had one call out. So I like helping the community I live in. I did it in my last community in Pinellas County. I was on the board for the HOA. Um, I like being involved. So this is my way of being involved on a micro basis. For the Howards, moving to the villages gave them the opportunity to build their own dream home that allows them to live independently. And even more so now, take a look at the Only in the Villages features starting on the front page of Monday's Daily Sun to learn more about these two smart homes. After this short break, knitters use their skills to help others. Stay with us. More Villages Lifestyle News is coming up right after this on VNN. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. An air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible, so call for a free inspection today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. Kay Kennedy likes to knit, which drew the attention of fellow residents at Buffalo Crossing's Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center. Soon enough, they started calling themselves the Knitting Sisters, and they get together daily in the lobby. I was sitting around somewhere knitting, and my friend Jane came by, and she said, could I help you? So I said, sure. So I got her some red yarn and needles, and she made a hat, and this is Jane. She made a hat. And after we knitted for a few weeks, then my friend Gail came along and she wanted to join. And so she's been knitting with us. We've been knitting uh, right at a year. And we have two that come from outside. They came here uh, visiting their relatives and saw us knitting and wanted to knit. So they joined our group, but they don't live here. The yarn is donated by the Presbyterian women of North Lake Presbyterian Church. And we do the knitting. I do the base, the uh, ribbing that holds the hat on your head. And then I turn it over to Hilda and she knits the knit part. Then she brings it back to me and I do the top. Now, Wally does the whole thing herself. Gail does crocheting and Jane helps out with the knitting. It's a team effort. 
Almost every hat on this table has been touched by more than one of us. Gail's making an afghan right now, and that's a gift for someone. And she has an afghan over there on the table, and there are three sweaters over there that Jane made and Wally made. First project we had was baby hats to donate to the hospital. And we had 140 of those that the Presbyterian women took and distributed them to the hospitals. And we felt like we had done everything we could do for babies. It was time to do something for adults. So the day we were there, when we presented the 140 baby hats, we decided then we would go with adult hats and make them for cancer patients. If anybody is welcome who likes to knit. We'd be happy to have them. In fact, a lady just came in uh, Saturday and she saw us knitting yesterday and she said, can I knit with you? And she's making socks on her own. Since Easter, these knitting sisters have made just over 180 hats for North Lake Presbyterian Church's women's group. Here's your VNN five day weather. The Heritage Festival at Brownwood on Friday was filled with variety, fun, and lots of socialization. Take a look. Up next, we have a recreation update for you. When you visit Cody's, you're walking into a great bar with fantastic drink options, including two for one happy hour, and a very cool place to eat with great food and phenomenal service. I love the BOGO for heaters every Wednesday and we love coming here and feel like family. Just like family, with loads of smiles for you at Cody's Original Roadhouse in Brownwood and Lake Sumter Landing. from Lake Sumter Landing in a small building with big windows near the water. AM 640, 102.7 and 104.5 FM. Your soundtrack to the villages. WVLG Wildwood. Every week, an employee with the Villages Recreation and Parks Department visits the WVLG studio to share some news about what is happening within their department. Let's check in now with sports coordinator Andrew Esposito. Now, from the WVLG studios, it's Jack Hammer, D, and Director of Recreation and Parks, John Rohan. Rohan, Rohan, it is time for the Recreation and Parks. It's coming up on 19 minutes after 7 o'clock, and I heard a rumor that John Rohan's not here today. 
We have Andrew Esposito from Recreation and Parks. Now, Andrew, you're the director of sports? I'm our sports coordinator, yes. Sports coordinator. Yep. So how are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Great, great. great. We're good. doing good. Had a nice weekend. Good. And uh, so what's going on in Rec and Parks? Sure. Um, well, today feels nice. I think we're back to fall, hopefully, for a little bit. Yeah. Um, registration for our 5K series is open up. Brownwood 5K is okay. in a couple weeks. So um, any of our runners or walkers or who are interested in be being part of that, um, registration's open. Check out districtgov.org. Um, the race is on Saturday the 21st over at Brownwood. Okay. Yep. You got a lot of people signed up already? Uh, registration's going pretty well so far. Good. Um, over the last few, we've seen registration just grow and grow for each of the events that we do at each of the squares. So um, I highly encourage anyone to go out there, register, even if it's just walking and having some fun. There's mm -hmm. there's all sorts of levels out there of runners and, and joggers and, and just walkers and strollers and dogs with the kids, you know, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the day of the event again? Saturday the 21st. Okay. Starts at 8 a.m. over at Brownwood. So you got some time. Yes. Mm -hmm. to register. We're still kind of contemplating we're looking at our schedule to see if we can actually you know, we're not running there's, there's oh no there's no way i think we're, <laughs> we're just looking for you know that i'm gonna walk and push d in like a stroller sure yeah uh, it might be the other way around <laughs> no i'm i'm more of a walker than you are yeah but you're so tiny and compact <laughs> so <laughs> i'd be right there with you yeah it's, uh, yeah i mean it's great because um you don't again you don't have to run in the event you can walk mm -hmm. um which is terrific and it's nice because you get to socialize right. mm. i think if you're walking you get to meet other villagers and and you can, you know, meet people, socialize, get some exercise. Yep, and, gotta make know. a morning of it. Yeah. yeah. And then this weekend, uh, we've got the craft show going on. Oh. So, oh. Yes. Okay. So that's this Saturday, uh, the 14th, over at Rohan, Colony, um, Savannah, and Laurel Manor this year. We have four centers for the craft show. Wow. Yes. All simultaneously? Yep. Uh, okay. It's Saturday from 9 till uh, 2 p.m. Mm. 9 until any... Uh, price of admission or is it nope. free just head on in check out um villagers show off their wares um mm. just kind of you can go from center to center if you'd like nice um, but another program that's growing we've always used just three centers now we're up to four already wow yeah. wow that's amazing mm -hmm. and it's great like you say you make a day out of it yeah absolutely out to four different centers and everything else sure. how about uh fall softball softball's going uh the same weekend actually is the 5k we're hosting our annual <laughs> softball tournament so wow yes that's a got, big, is it the same day it's it's friday saturday and sunday oh. it's a three-day event got a lot um, going and on. we're at three complexes this year we're at everglades saddlebrook and buffalo glen okay uh, games will go from eight till about two or so each day um, but we've got 30 teams from all over the state. We've got a couple out-of-state teams coming in. So really? Yes, it'll be it'll be a fun event. Um, another thing, like you said, just start at one, go to the next, see who's playing. We have a number of Villages teams, too, we're very excited for. Okay. Um, so we want to see them and uh, see them in a tournament atmosphere and kind of have a little more fun with it. Mm. Wow. What's, yep. the, um, what's the payoff for winning the tournament? We've got prizes for the guys and, and ladies. Um, we have um, prizes and plaques that they, they put up. Beautiful. Yep. So it's it's a fun event, but um, there's there's plenty of villagers that we encourage to come out who play just regularly, kind of see a little bit different play, or mm -hmm. um, maybe some guys that they, or, or ladies that they haven't seen in a tournament atmosphere. It'll be it'll be a fun, unique experience for mm. them. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to know about anything going on in Rec and Parks, all you have to do is go to districtgov, G O V dot org. And it's all up there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. And it's terrific. So, Andrew, thanks for taking. You got anything else? I don't want to cut you off. Uh, no, that's it for now. <laughs> okay. Sure we'll have more going on. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're all set. I just want to thank Andrew Esposito for coming in, filling in for John Rohan, who I'm assuming will be back next week. Andrew, thanks so much for stopping by. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. There he is, Andrew Esposito from Recreation and Park. We'll be back with more news from Florida's friendliest hometown. Stay with us. More Villages Lifestyle News is coming up right after this on VNN. Going on now at Cart World Golf Cars, the summer clearance. All new 2023 club cars and Garrias must go. Buy now and save big. Model year and discounts up to $1,250. Whether you're in the market for a two, four, or six seater with gas, electric, or lithium power, Cart World has it. There's never been a better time to buy. 
hurry. Don't miss out. When these cars are gone, so are these prices. Hearing loss doesn't have to be this painful. We can help. Take our seven day free trial. Elite Hearing Centers of America. From hearing problems to hearing solutions. This is VNN. According to the Alzheimer's Association, Florida is ranked second in the country with the highest number of Alzheimer's diagnoses at nearly 580,000. Locally, residents are always willing to financially support those battling the disease. On Saturday, the Alzheimer's Association held its signature annual fundraising event with a walk to end Alzheimer's at the Village's Polo Club. Prior to that walk, the committee surpassed its original goal of raising more than $165,000 by more than $20,000. This is the biggest turnout this Villages event has ever had, according to the Villages Health Dementia Care Specialist, Melissa Denham. They had more than 800 registered participants, but Melissa expects participation numbers to reach nearly 1,000 after factoring in those who registered that morning. There was a sea of purple shirts everywhere you looked as people showed their purple pride. People were also holding color-coded flowers. Yellow is for caregivers, blue for the diagnosed, purple for the ones left behind, and orange for support. The white flower brought to each walk represents the promise of the first survivor that one day there will be a cure and the first survivor will walk with them. An average of more than 600 walks are held nationwide each year. In other Alzheimer's news, the village's Parrot Heads raised $62,000 last month at its Rob Ainsley Memorial Golf Tournament, which was donated to the Alzheimer's Association's The Longest Day. That amount was double how much this giving group collected last year. The group has given the largest single donation across the entire country this year. Also on Saturday, residents in and around the community were showing their support for students at the Village's Charter School. Around 600 people participated in the annual Buffalo Scholarship Foundation Golf Tournament that was held at Glenview Champions Country Club, Nancy Lopez Country Club, Palmer Legends Country Club, and Tierra Del Sol Country Club. PGA golf professional at Tierra del Sol Country Club, Kevin Sackville, says they love supporting the school community in its effort to raise educational funds with golf events like this one, and he hopes to keep Tierra del Sol in the rotation for future years. Kevin says the beautiful weather Saturday paired with all the golf courses in top tournament conditions created the perfect environment at all four courses. This year's tournament featured more than 60 sponsors, the Buffalo Herd, or Buffalo Families Helping Educate Responsibly Developed Children, helped organize this event. All proceeds from the tournament directly benefit the Buffalo Scholarship Foundation. Overall, the foundation has given more than $2.2 million to hundreds of graduates from the Village's High School. It's time now for a brief commercial break. Stay with us. More Village's Lifestyle News is coming up right after this on VNN. This hurricane preparedness tip from VNN and WVLG is brought to you by The Villages Insurance. Hi, this is WVLG staff forecaster Christopher James. Understanding the forecasts are an important part of being prepared for severe weather situations. A hurricane watch indicates hurricane conditions are a threat within 48 hours. Review your preparation plans, keep informed, and be ready to act if a warning is issued. A hurricane warning alerts you that hurricane conditions are expected within 36 hours. Complete your preparation. A tropical storm brings winds between 39 and 73 miles an hour. A hurricane produces winds over 74 miles an hour. 
Keep listening for more information, including supplies, pet tips, and detailed information to keep on hand during hurricane season presented by The Villages Insurance. And thanks for listening to Your Villages Soundtrack, WVLG. Clap your hands and stop your feet. Time now for the Village's Entertainment Beat. I'm Natalie, here with your Entertainment Beat. There's a lot of shows to look forward to that are going on sale this week. Coming back to Savannah Center, tonight's the night. The Rod Stewart Tribute is bringing out all the hits for you to enjoy on November 29th. The original PBS show, Christmas with the Celts, is celebrating 12 years of touring and is coming to the Sharon to celebrate the holidays on December 6th. Mr. Blue Sky, Living Thing, and Don't Bring Me Down are coming to Savannah Center when Ticket to the Moon, the ELO experience, comes to the Villages December 12th. For those who remember the Elton John tribute Savannah Center hosted in the past, the Rocketman show is coming back December 15th. If you like Phantom of the Opera or Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, more music of Andrew Lloyd Webber, a tribute, is coming to Savannah Center January 4th. And finally, on our list of on sale, Three Tenors Plus One, featuring arias from Timeless Operas, is going to be directed by Maestro Bill Doherty, and that show will be at the Sharon on February 10th. All new shows go on sale Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and can be purchased online at thevillagesentertainment.com, at box office locations throughout the villages, and even over the phone. Next time, I'm covering all theater and musical shows that are coming up soon. That's your Entertainment Beat for today, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, Natalie. The Villages, of course, is the place to be when it comes to great musical entertainment. And these are the bands ready to perform for you on Tuesday. That's all the news we have for you now. Pick up a copy of Tuesday's Daily Sun to read about new specialty license plates supporting charities. Keep enjoying the Village's lifestyle. Thanks for watching your VNN Lifestyle News Show. get a hearing test you should also have what's called speech and noise testing most of our patients will tell you they have trouble understanding people when there's a lot of ambient noise so if I don't test you in noise how do I quantify your handicap how do I pick the right technology to overcome that so speech and noise is a big part of our test but guess what it takes two minutes it's simple it's effective it's scientific we do it I'm happy to report that the other thing that's huge is a cognitive health screen we know that untreated hearing loss damages the brain, it alters structures of the brain. Well, if I put hearing devices on you and I get the signal to the brain, but the brain is changed, right, that impacts how well the treatment works. So when I screen cognition, when we screen cognition, we get this information about uh, three different domains of your cognitive health, and then we test you again in four months, right? So I treat your hearing loss, you go through your adaptation and your rehab process, you come back in four months and I put you back on that device. And guess what? We're seeing improvements in memory and executive function. So not only do we listen to your problem and treat it effectively, we're also really big about outcomes and, and validating them. Your Village's soundtrack is here for you throughout hurricane season and severe weather season. 
Dahlia, now a Category 4 hurricane. This WVLG hurricane update is brought to you by Villages Insurance. Please listen carefully. And we're also going to be joined by our forecasters, Dave Toll and Christopher James. If you take a look at your home here in the villages, that's getting almost two-thirds of the way up towards the In the villages, between one and four inches, and the wind speeds we expect going between 30 and 40 miles an hour during the brunt of the storm. This hurricane update, we have the information you need when you need it. Stay tuned to WVLG.